cycle consists from three components. Inhale, hold, exhale. Gently find out the tension in his calf and start hurting him. Breathe through this, breathe through the pain. In the same time, when you roll towards his head, you both inhale. You all know that Sam has had a lot of difficulties with his heart over the past year. Um, and he really attributes the fact that he's still here to Sergey's breathing techniques. So, um, just like to say that we thank you. So, well, first of all, there's no mic in this. <laughs> they belong to Sam just as well as me. There's none of us as healthy to start up. Okay. Uh, just take a moment and a look. Look around and take a mental picture of yourself. The way you're standing, the way you're positioning yourself, the way like people standing around you. Okay? Try to have a scan of yourself. Do you need all the tension you have now in the body to maintain that position? Just a, a snapshot. Yes or no? Okay? Then you'll find out to maintain the same body position, you can relax pretty much half of the muscle you had tense. Right? We didn't even notice those things. You start walking around, and you also start seeing that people get tense more than they have to all the time. You look at the small little kids, toddlers. Soft, they fall, they stand up, they hardly ever cry, they fall. Try to trip on a street being 25, 30, 40, 50, something will get hurt, something will get broken. So the more we grow, the more we leave. We accumulate level of tension, physical, psychological, you can call it spiritual tension levels in a body we don't even realize. And it's not just the tension that we have within one muscle, like a muscle had a cramp. Even with the same muscle, we have the knots that hardly ever get released. Okay? We will have a chance today and try to work with each other and find some of those knots. But the bottom line is all those tension do not come free. Take energy and they take tremendous level of energy to maintain because every knot in the muscle we have have associated knot in a brain, okay? Once you start releasing yourself from that energy, from, that, from those tension, you feel that you have more energy to survive. Young kids, they can run all day long, how they get tired. The more older you get, it would seem to you have, you should have a little more energy, but no, you get more and more tired, okay? So, what I want to do today is to find out how you can locate some of those tensions in your body, how to self-cleanse them, and how to use someone else's help. Okay? Now, breathing part. Huge subject. On a nutshell, you inhale oxygen, you exhale CO2. It's simple chemical exchange. There's more happening between. Okay? Uh, today, don't try to analyze it, just try to stay with the flow. Uh, breathing cycle consists from three components. Inhale, hold, exhale. Can be easier than that, right? Inhale, hold, exhale. For today, I wanted to ask uh, to inhale the nose, exhale the mouth. Again, there is reason for that. Just the way you're standing now, a couple times, deeply, slowly inhale with the nose, exhale with the mouth, without tensing up. Then do the same thing, inhale, mouth, exhale, mouth. Does anyone detect a difference? What's I, the difference? I get, I get more tension on the inhale through the mouth. It, it, doesn't, it, doesn't trend, it doesn't continue through the exhale, but for the inhale, I feel like there's more that I'm using the muscles, the intercostal muscles more. Other observations. When you exhale with the mouth, what else happens? Do you feel that uh, when you inhale with the mouth, like your head is not getting involved, like air goes, like nothing goes in upstairs? Yes. Because inhale with the nose, we cool down certain glands in the skull that help you to keep your endocrine system running. Mm -hmm. Science cool. Okay. Four. So today, inhale, nose, mouth, exhale. We will be try, we'll try to do, to cover, again, it's not enough time, we'll try to cover two different kind of breathing. Uh, slow, deep breathing, 
and short under tension. Okay? And I'll explain you what will be the difference and how to work with it. Okay? Relax as much as you can. Now, two steps. Inhale, nose inhale. Two steps, exhale, mouth exhale. Nose in, mouth out. Four steps in, four steps out. Six steps in, six steps out. Eight steps in, eight steps out. Again, stretch your inhale for entire eight steps. Same the exhale. At some point, counting even become questionable. Ten steps in, ten steps out. So little by little you deep breathe deeper and deeper and deeper. Slow, deep breath. You're not tense, you go through a familiar movement, there's no stress factors. So that's your slow, deep breath. 12 steps in, 12 steps out. Inhale down, exhale up, or exhale down, inhale up. As a fast? No, you walk. Lay down, stand up, keep walking. Try not to hold the breath when you do that. And if you can, keep your hands on the ground at any point. Four in, four down. Yes, still four steps in, four steps down. And little by little, start rolling slower. <laughs> now, lay down with the exhale, lay down your back. Lay down, lay down, lay down. Relax. Close your eyes. Don't cross your legs. And I guess. Nose in. Mouth out. Slowly. You're completely relaxed. And you inhaling through the hole on your head. You exhaling through the holes on your feet. And now reverse it. Bottom of your feet. Inhale. Top of your head. Exhale. Now, don't start yet. Start inhaling and exhaling at the same time. When you roll towards his head, you both inhale. Okay? When you're rolling towards his feet, you both exhale. Understood? Try. The bottom one, stay, stay alive. And breathe. Now, now what? No, no, we're going back and forth. Inhale towards the head, exhale towards the feet. Don't rush. In fact, go as slow as you can. Towards the head. Inhale. Towards the feet. Exhale. Top of your head. Inhale. Bottom of your feet. Exhale. Just like we're breathing now with a long breath. Top of your head in. Trying to get the flow. Now, you get behind your partner and first with one foot, with one side, gently Find out the tension in his calf and start hurting him. Okay. Carefully, gently, you are delivering the level of stress, level of tension, level of pain, which he cannot yet control. Now, being behind you, you are designed to decide how much pain he should suffer. Okay? What his goal is, his goal is more and more interesting. He's trying to minimize level of pain by breathing. Very interesting point. Try, it works different for somebody, for different people, so you try both. The higher level of tension, the higher level of pain, the more shallow and more short your breathing becomes. When you relax, you breathe slowly deep. You have tension, pain. What happened to him now? He shut down instantly. Try not to shut down. Your partner will give you manageable pain, level of pain, you try to breathe through that pain. And not just breathe, but breathe through the spot where the pain is delivered. Your partner will give you one spot on the calf, and probably everyone in this room have a tension in the calf. Okay? What he wants to do, the higher level of pain, the more often he breathes. But the breath does not come even to his lungs. 
very short, okay? By inhaling or exhaling through that spot, okay? Giving him the pain, I'm giving him spot to breathe through. So, depending how proficient he is with this uh, drill, he will be able or he will not be able to lower the level of pain for himself. So, if he does it right, I will be able to give him more and more and more pain and ultimately, together, working together, we will get rid of that nut in his muscle, which he doesn't need, which drains his energy even while he is sleeping. Find out what works for you. It works differently for different people. The bottom line does work, okay? So, partner behind is helping him to manage One inhale, one exhale. One inhale, one exhale. Don't go deep. The higher level of pain, the more shallow and the more frequent your pain become, uh, the breath become. The pain is high, <laughs> you breathe like crazy, but it's not just you're breathing, you're moving your um, air in and out of your mouth. You try to breathe through that spot. Okay? Make sense? Now, the partner behind had to be responsible. If he started breathing sharply, <laughs> Nose in, mouth out. And the one pain, once pain start going away, slow down your breath, you're adjusted to it. I'm holding with the same force. His breathing becomes normal, I'm giving him a little more. Nose in, mouth out. Nose in, mouth out. Until pain goes away, breathe. If it's still there, breathe sharp. I didn't release, he adjusted to that level of pain. So what he's doing, he is helping himself to relax that muscle. Which seems to be relaxed before he got done, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't try to fall asleep yet, there's more to come. Now, you understand what you should do now? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Try it. And you can use different parts of your foot. Heel, ball, edge, toes, doesn't matter. Good to go into both caps. <laughs> and stand on both caps. And start walking. Right on the outside of it. Right. Breathe through this. Breathe through the pain. Woo! Again, top of your head. Inhale. Bottom of your feet. Exhale. Relax as much as you can. You may start feeling flow better in your calves and in your legs because we broke some tension. There's plenty left still. Use short breathing through the moving, movement exercise. And we'll pick up the simple one, the push-ups. Okay? The goal is not to give up when you feel weak. Okay? At some point, you will feel, I cannot do it anymore, forget it. I'm not here for that, I can live without it. <laughs> Again, try not to give in to that. Whatever breathing you just had through the pain, it's different source of tension, different source of pain, but ultimately, it's a very similar mechanism in your muscle, okay? You inflict it upon yourself, and you have to do it through your movement, okay? So, Get on the push-up position, not right away. And whenever you feel tension in the body, register it. Because you will have it more or less, uh, one tip, before you even start doing your push-ups, minimize tension in your body, okay? Whatever position you will take, all the way up, halfway down, all the way down. No, we don't leave that, right? Okay? Minimize tension. Keep in mind, the breathing comes split second before the movement. So you don't start inhaling and halfway through, start, start going down and start, start inhaling halfway through the sand. No, start inhaling, 
Inhales over. Start exhaling. Exhales over. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Halfway. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. You train. How many times you run down? 20 hours a week, you did 11 push-ups. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now, it's much different slowly. Okay? With the squats, same thing. Stand up. Exhale down. Inhale up 10 times. All the way down. Twenty down, twenty up. Ready? One, two, three. Breathe sooner. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, and relax, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 8, 9, 10, halfway, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. With an exhale on your back. Slowly bring your partner down as low as he can go without collapsing. And the harder he gets, more from you breathe. Same breathing. It's harder to breathe. <laughs> you bring your partner as low as, as, low as you can, okay. closing his collapse. Now, three times backwards, three times forward. Okay? <laughs> breathe, breathe. Don't hold your breath. Breathe. <laughs> The higher level of tension, the shorter, the shallower you breathe. You can keep going down. Yeah, you Do not allow your partner to collapse. Bring him as low as you can. Does this help you when I hold your hand? Sure, easy. Oh, this is easy. Nose in, mouth out. Nose in, mouth out. Nose in, mouth out. stress and a duress, having a blade or a weapon come out or a situation where you're not familiar with the person, a real aggressive situation. And I understand the concept of using the breath to kind of control yourself, but how do you do that? How do you prep to get to that point with that unfamiliarity? Does the nature of the stress make any difference on you? That's, it, 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 that's what I'm talking about. With someone pulling a knife versus someone taking a punch at you, it seems to have a different psychological effect on many people. The degree is different because the level of danger is different. But internal psychological and physical reaction, physiological reaction in your body, they're identical. Right. So the stress you have from staying from doing 150 push-ups and doing your last one for the stress and stress of going through the blade work 
is very yeah. similar yeah. for this yeah. yeah. uh, When they had a blade, live blade next to you for an unfriendly opponent, and somebody choking you on the, on the mat, <laughs> which you have chosen only to tap out, does your yeah. fear yeah. and attention will be any different? Yeah. You've been choked or you've been blade. I, I, I would be honest with you, familiarity with blade would make me more nervous. Yet again, in terms of more or less, I'm talking about the no, stress is equal. Yeah, yeah, stress is equal. Yeah. So you have to manage your own stress regardless of what the nature of this will be. Yeah. Basically, dealing with that stress at any point. That's right. So whatever is outside of you, you cannot control. You can control only what you do. And from that point of view, pretty much any kind of stress would be irrelevant. You can manage yourself. <laughs> Breathing will become a tool. Again, pretty much the only tool. Or that's tool. But the nature of the stress will be relevant. You can exercise different, uh, different source of stress, different level of stress in a training. You can introduce a training blade, training gun, one opponent, multiple opponent, ground work, stand up work, grappling work, uh, punching, kicking, no rules. Again, nature of the stress, nature, source of the stress will be different. Your own reaction will be very similar. Different in what level? But very similar psychologically, physiologically, mm -hmm. and if you can imagine those, right? If you know how to manage those, sure. you will be. For, first of all, you <laughs> minimize your lower level of your psychological excitement. You start. Mm -hmm. So therefore, instead of doing this, you know, you, yes, you all of a sudden start seeing a real situation even more rational, even more broad, more functional. Mm -hmm. So even from Different degree of angle, things change. Mm -hmm. That's internal psychological tension. Physical tension, if you're tense up by the fear of panic and anything else, it slows down, it limits your mechanical, your mm -hmm. physical reactions right away. Because before you start moving, you have to relax. If you're already relaxed, again, from, from a plain natural case, you're much more functional. Mm -hmm. Not to say the blood will blood blade penetrates the tense muscle faster than the relaxed muscle. Right? That makes sense. So, and it comes to the point how well you can control yourself. We are. We actually can do the whole whole session today on the breathing. And I, one of the things I was telling Sam about is um, as I'm getting older, my asthma is coming back. I'm having a hard time breathing. I'm finding I can use my inhaler and stuff. I don't want to do that. I don't want to rely upon that. I want to control the breath. And my son, who's six years old, is now starting to suffer the same thing. So I want him to learn to, to breathe correctly. And we definitely don't breathe correctly. We're breathing through our chest and often we're, you know, making our, shortening our breath. And once you feel that asthmatic attack coming, you start to panic and it makes it worse. Mm -hmm. So that would be great, actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm pretty much open for anything. So we can do the application. But in all the cases, it's not application. It's too much kind of how well you can control yourself. So. Yeah. Oh, already. Oh, right. Jonathan needs, stay on the quad risers. Oh, and get some prize. Eugene, you and I will wind together. Come on, let's wind together. <laughs> 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 we did with the with the whole body. Then we tried to do with the, some large muscles with the not the massage. We didn't do the massage. So you're pointing your partner where the tension exists, and your partner were working on himself, even though he was just breathing through the tension. He was breathing through the pain. He was relaxing because he had no choice but to relax through the pain. Otherwise, he would have to live through the pain. So when you were breathing through the tension, you did or you didn't realize you were relaxing. And now the muscle feels a little healthier. And we only a fraction for what we did. So if you work with yourself, you can get rid of most of those, most of those tension. If you have a partner who is capable to help you, uh, you can do a lot of work to cleanse yourself from that tension. So we didn't do anything unusual today, right? We didn't do anything out, out, out of the ordinary. Anything that you cannot do on your own or with someone else, your family member. Have to be careful where to step and where not to step. Join us out of uh, limits and 
all the injuries out of limits, but uh, you can do a lot of work just from breathing. And this is how you can minimize your injuries, you can minimize your energy expenditures. It comes pretty much to normalize your psychological, emotional life in many ways. So when, when you're tensing up, you decide what you want to get out of it. So you're, you're tensing up that muscle at that time and if then you breathing it out to another area. You can do that, or you can breathe through the knot, through the, like when, when he was staying on your, on your calf. Were you breathing through the entire calf or just through that spot? Uh, I'd have to say the entire calf. It might be easier at some point. It, sometimes it's if you have a joint pain, if you end up in a joint lock, yeah. okay, uh, you end up in the in arm lock, and you cannot get out. But you have to extend the time uh, for your if if lock if joint lock lock your entire body, you're not functional. The only way for you to survive that lock is tense up the joint or muscle of the joint being affected under a threat. Relax the entire body, the rest of the body, and move from the lock. If you tense up the entire body from the pain, you're doomed. You're done. Okay. So you're working on managing the tension at will. Conscious tension management. We're not talking about relaxing and tensing. It's too simple because the only way you can be pulled fully relaxed, we lay down on the ground and you're barely breathing. That's when you're relaxed. So when someone tells you relax, relax, it may be misleading. Maybe they're talking about a certain area or a certain spot that have to be relaxed. So whatever you're doing, you're fighting, you're wrestling, you can find yourself that you're tensing more than you need to both physically, emotionally, and that drain your resources because they're limited. You have five minutes match, if you tense up the whole body, I don't know. There, I, I could not go through the seven minutes judo match with a holding grip tight. It's not gonna happen. But that's how beginners start. You lock yourself and you hope nothing bad will happen to you. Then two minutes later down the road, you figure your hands don't work anymore. <laughs> and then something will happen to you. <laughs> Do you know anyone who choked himself on exhale because they forgot to inhale? Um, so that panic <laughs> is not just a fiber, right? Before you go to unconscious, you inhale no matter what. Yeah. Well, this brain doesn't know much. This brain. Yeah, so it, I had a question. It seemed on his point that I was. I had I had no problem at all with the exhale, but you know, it seems like you just say natural that you'd be able to inhale, but I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> you can't I, I, inhale? It, it, seem, it seems my, my, my inhalation consistently is, is much shorter and, and much more difficult than the exhale. Now, is that typical for everybody or, or you know? Well, you can answer yourself. Just yeah. do Eugene. Because, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it was by half, easily. Why do you think you have to inhale fast? Just, well, just you know yourself, analyze yourself. Why do you have to do what I'm doing? Because you're intelligent guy, you know, you can answer that. Yeah, okay. So why? Uh, I would imagine, because I'm not breathing with the diaphragm, that I'm kind of breathing and I'm keeping it up, up, up top. But that's my guess. I think it is a little more psychological. Okay. Because you're greedy and there's some fear sits in you that you need to inhale, you feel that that, I had to have this hair. Mm -hmm. It's like with a square breathing. Mm -hmm. Next time when you fight, mm -hmm. try to fight an exhale. <clears throat> exhale, hold the breath and fight as long as you can. Okay. And see how long you can do it. When you walk, when you walk out of here today, mm -hmm. see how, how long you can hold your breath on the same square breathing with the steps. Two steps, inhale, two step back, hold, mm -hmm. two step exhale. And analyze yourself, what is happening with you why do you feel urge to inhale fast? Because it's not it's not physiological need. Because mm -hmm. your bloodstream have enough oxygen to sustain for a minute or two easy. Right. In Chinese medicine, the normal health test, you should be able to hold your breath for 30 seconds as minimum. One minute is normal health condition. So if you don't have, if you don't, if you can't hold your breath for let's say 30 seconds, that means your need uh, for oxygen is higher than it should be. That means you have way too much tension in the body, physical, psychological, mental tension that forces you to expand more oxygen than you need. And again, it can be physical, but again, it's never physical. It's always combination. It's never either mental or physical. It's always the go hand to hand. 
So there's some some reason for that fear that sits in you, and it, I'm sure it translates not just in the brain, it has some other uh, illustration in your life. <laughs> okay. uh, holding, particularly after the exhale, yeah. has, has been a problem for me. Today was much, much better on the square breathing. That usually the hold on the exhale, there's some tension there that I'm not sure why it's there because when I hold, I can, I can do an, what, I, what I would refer to as an open hold after the inhale where I'm not, I'm not tensing anything. But after the exhale, there's, there's some tension there that I've never been able to get. I feel much better at getting rid of it. Up, and the next exhale from the, it's easier for me to go <coughs> the bottom, and the next exhale from the top, until you know, he stuck one on here, <laughs> and that one, and then I start, uh, can feel it complete from the top, and then go down. And I sleep, I think, all of the rest of the last one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I'm asleep, and then I don't know about the square feeding and so on. <laughs> 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 that's, that's what I have. <laughs> but again, that peace, that freedom, it, it's a great feeling. Yeah. You can relax completely. Sometimes you feel you're relaxed, but something's still not, and you don't have any control over it. So, you did right. You fell asleep. <laughs> we didn't hear you snoring. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, this was a great experience. Uh, my name is Pitt from Oakland. Um, I'd do it again with a heartbeat. Come all the way up here. It was, it was uh, amazing. You know, <clears throat> we did the breathing in and out. I was trying to like have one part, like half of my body, make it go in, and then the other half went out. And uh, but I wouldn't do it. In my head, I just kept saying like this this wind that it wouldn't go like this. It just was going like this instead. Um, okay, well, I guess it's just because you kept saying be natural. Mm -hmm. That was the way I went with it. And um, when he brought the pain, you know, uh, I've, I've always been able to just gut it and just, you know, but I don't breathe. I just suck it up. And until either something gives or breaks or whatever, and or, or something snaps and somebody's nice enough to stop. Um, Do you want to live like that? Huh? <laughs> Do you want to live like that to suck up the pain when something breaks? <laughs> don't know that one. <laughs> I want to be the best, I guess. Whatever that takes. Is it really doing best? Oh, no, 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 I'm worried. I'm just, I'm here to, you know. No, but you, you feel the difference, right? Absolutely. And it was, like you said, it was freedom. You know, it was just the not caring. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and uh, like I said, thank you very much. It was a very, it was a deep experience for me and myself. Muscle at some points give up. But with the slow, uh, slow drills, at some point you feel the muscles are no longer working and you can sustain your movement only by breathing and there's nothing that holds you at that point another mechanism jumps in your tendons your ligaments your white muscle tissues start functioning and versus that's the way i was explained and uh, i feel the difference and i know how it works i know it works i just give you my explanation the way i was given uh, the red tissues or muscle tissues uh, expand in white tissues, ligament tendons have a capacity to store it, to absorb it and keep it. So at the point when the muscles are no longer working and uh, you still force yourself through the drill, through the movement, your white tissues start accumulating energy. When the drill is over, when, the, when you go on with your life, whatever happened with this energy in storing your ligaments, they start healing joints surrounding. And I know people recover their knees, their shoulders, their elbows, from severe injuries. Just doing slow exercise and breathing. So all those degenerative joint disease were as minimal were stopped, slowing down. In some cases I know they're recovered. Mm -hmm. like breathing and going slowly because muscles that are full with the knots and tension can't go slow. People try to go fast and the traditional sport, uh, weightlifting, uh, fast movement does, doesn't do that. Because muscles trying to go around those knots and move fast, bypass. If you force yourself to go slowly, you're working those knots out. You're releasing the tension. That's where that sense of freedom, peace, and extra energy comes from. I am pretty sure that you have now more energy than we started from, even though you did some strenuous exercise. Now you have more energy level you can do for another three, four hours drilling with no problems, even though it was strenuous in the middle. Am I right?
you know? Also, I, there towards the end, like like he was saying, you know, there towards the end for a minute, I, I caught myself, I was like, oh, wow. I was so relaxed, I almost started to doze off for a minute, and I was like, wow. But as we were breathing, I, I had heard somebody else say the same thing, you know, I noticed I could feel the flow a lot easier through through my ankles breathing. And when you did a reverse, when you said reverse, I kind of found it was easier to kind of, instead of breathing, you know, in through the mouth, or in through the nose and out through the mouth, once you said to reverse, I kind of went in through the mouth and breath, breathed out through the nose, you know, and it kind of helped, like I could feel it. It was, it was cool, thank you. And the legs and stuff when we're standing on our, on our calves and on our, uh, on the, our thighs, um, when, when I used to do it before, it would, uh, I would, it, my legs would be more tense and it would be a lot more painful, like hard to manage and um, I'd have to breathe really heavily or, um, or quickly just to manage the pain. <coughs> now it's to the point where I don't, it doesn't bother me anymore, like I can feel um, a certain, like pain to a certain extent, but it's just, uh, like I can relax to the point where it doesn't even bother me, it's just like, oh there's like an enormous load on my legs, but who cares. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think the biggest thing for me was just what we talked about at the beginning. I kept it in mind of the intensity, just whatever it is, whether it's the knife or the, you know, the body, the hand, keeping that by the end, it was very relaxed no matter what you were bringing forward. It was no way to this, uh, anxiousness or anxiety from what we were going to do next. It was, it was nice to have that relief, that kind of not caring. Just, we're going to do it. Let's do it. Again, you generated that feeling oh, in yourself. So, uh, and again, nothing we did today is outside of the range of what you cannot do. Right? So this is something you can do on your own. When you wake up tomorrow, start from breathing, top to bottom, bottom to top. Before you even open your eyes. Every time you get tired, it's also middle of the practice, training. Lay down, sit down, relax, breathe through different body parts. When you fly home, feel your back, your back start aching, breathe. There's so many things you can do with that breath. Simple, we, in, a, in an hour and a half, we cover pretty much we didn't have enough time to fill the full scope of it, but we have, I gave enough tool to start working with it. So you have a direction. And I hope you did, it did feel some difference. So that, that was great. So if you can take just that part home today, I'm satisfied.